started by crafting her. To me, when you create meals as a way to collapse the distance between you and your family members, when you use meals as a way to lure the people that you want into the room, and that so much of Imani's life is this bitter sweetness of how do I get my father closer? How do I get my mom who passed closer? How do I get my child and my history closer to who I am? And the only way she knows how to do it is through food. But it would be like queso frito, which is fried cheese, and fried green tomatoes. Yeah. Oh. Which I don't know if that's healthy, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> not even salad anymore. But, but for me, like, what are things that I know really well, and what does it mean to like rethink about them in a new context? Or bring them forward and say, like, maybe we haven't. I don't think my mom has ever had fried green tomatoes. Like, that's not something that's necessarily Caribbean cuisine. I don't know that um, the family that my in-laws and who are from North Carolina have had a lot of queso frito. But, like, what would it mean to then say, oh, here we are together on this plate? And what is that? All right, so I am back from the With the Fire on High book event with Elizabeth Acevedo, Clint Smith, and Cece. I have to see if they have her last name, um, and I'll include it on the screen. But essentially, um, this is starting off my reading vlog because I picked up the book. Today's the release of the book, and luckily Elizabeth Acevedo lives in DC, so we were the first stop of the book tour. Um, but it was a really good discussion. It actually opened with poetry, which was cool. Um, Cece is actually uh, basically Elizabeth Acevedo and Clint Smith were mentors to her. Um, Clint Smith was actually one of her teachers, and it's cool to see that come full circle. And the poem that she opened up with was a personal poem of her that she wrote when she was 16. And um, had just given birth as a teenage mom. And it's amazing to tie that in. The lead character in this is also a teenage mother. And I just feel like this book sounds super dope, not just cause it's like cooking and food and stuff like that, um, but it's late. I am tired, but yeah, we'll kick off the reading vlog here and I'll let you guys know my thoughts. So far I'm on page zero. <laughs> so I made the mistake of starting to read this tonight before going to bed and I'm now on page 45. I don't know if I'll be able to put it down just because the way it flows um, but I love that the book actually opens with a recipe which is so cute but I'll bring my camera tomorrow at work and stuff so you guys can see me on my lunch break and I can update you guys on my reading so see you tomorrow. Just thought I would sign in to let you guys know on page 78, I just had my first near tear moment. <laughs> just, yeah, the bunny, it got to me. Mm. Hey, Nada. I, I should have known. Water. Hmm? I forgot to bring you a water. Oh, why would you bring me a water? You're so funny. Hi, puppy. Hey. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh, we got the ticket to buy my way. I knew you were the one coming when I just said y'all were on Samara. Oh, oh, I got scared. I don't know why. Like, oh, you're on Katie Kimber. Oh, what is it? Oh. Um, they, um, <laughs> anchor. Ah, <laughs> uh, that is let me get. I can't believe y'all got the hatchback. Come on, puppy. I think I'm like a princess when I'm happy. <laughs> The way puppy did it was like he was putting me in a baby seat. <laughs> That's how you felt? Yeah, because he's like <laughs> using both hands. <laughs> you yeah. good, Jen. What'd you put on? Oh my god, no, I was so good. I didn't put nothing on. Oh, I literally I woke up. Maybe no, but from the what I smells <laughs> different now. Early waiting for oh, her. She oh, tell so me. No, when I wake up, I was going to do my no, coffee. puppy looked like he was going to get ready, and I should have still not told him. Because at 9.15, he asked me um, when is Jen's flight, and I didn't want to tell him. Okay, so, I, you know what I told him? I said, we have to leave here at 10 a.m. Because I thought that's a good <laughs> idea to tell him. I, I, puppy is La Real Why he taking off his shirt. I said, what are you doing? It's time to go. Is it all right for Yes, I love the limelight. Oh, okay. Hey. Uh -oh, what was it called? You saw about the designer party that that white guy that's famous. I don't know who he is. He had they had they had regular people there, so they had them sign waivers. I guess they probably usually do that. I think they're doing that because of the Me Too movement. Too movement. Too movement. 
Oh no. So that is crazy because you know my coworkers are always saying, Oh my god, how do you how did you live in Florida with all the lizards and stuff? And I'm like Yeah, I'm like, it's so funny because lizards we don't think about lizards as something crazy. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Easy. Oh yeah, y'all never see my camera, do y'all? No, no, Jennifer invested. No wonder her videos are so nice. I so mm. sweet. And then mommy would say. Oh, you part with still the camera, no? no. Oh, my. This is me today. But I'm so happy because I am home. Yes. I am in Florida. Oh, man. <laughs> with my family, having a good time. I just got here. And oh my gosh, so I was telling my mom, why does Imani remind me so much of my mom? So the character from With the Fire and High that I'm reading in the book, I was telling my mom she loves to cook and something with her cooking. People can't explain it, but it's so good. And it gives you this sense of all these good feelings and just makes you feel like all these sweet memories. And it reminded me so much of my mommy. I think you will find something. You gonna hook puppy up? <laughs> oh yeah. No, he look good, mommy. I don't say that no good, but well, he could look better. We will be ten years less. <laughs> oh, no. After I finish with him. Every <laughs> <laughs> then look at him now and then later on you two. Oh okay. Two after we're okay. gonna see the before yes. and after. Hey, they just a number. They just just a number. We will see. After I'm finished. Hey. Let's have again. Hey Pierre. Oh, hey Pierre. Who say hey Pierre? Like, hey. Oh, my eyes are big. <laughs> so, <laughs> when, so yesterday we did not vlog. We actually went to the Millennium concert, which was a lot of fun. It was my second time, your first time. Hey. Anyways, and now we're gonna go out for Mother's yes, Day. Uh, I, I, I'm still thinking about Spectacular and where he got his um, creative idea. <laughs> his creative idea. Of giving women. I, 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 <laughs> but no, the whole concert was amazing though. It was, it was fun. It made me like think about even the years that the songs came out, what else was going on. Yeah, the songs nostalgic. were so, yeah, it was everything. It was every, and the crowd was so happy and I feel like everybody was enjoying it. Yeah, And the comedian good. did good, like, involved the audience so much, he didn't stay on stage and do comedy and leave. Yeah. It was better that he came on stage and then everybody's laughing and at each other and it wasn't It was good bad. vibes it wasn't and good comedy. energy. Everything was, everybody was everything. just there for a good time. Yeah. So it was really fun. And it was fun because we haven't gone to a concert together since I was in high school. So that's been that's a while. Yeah. yeah. I think that was it. The yeah. T.I. concert. Yeah, I feel like we... I thought you still don't remember Chingy, but I swear we saw Chingy together. I don't know why you don't think we did, but whatever. <laughs> um, but anywho, yeah. So now we're gonna go off to eat for brunch, and it's funny because I did your makeup yesterday, and it was so nice. This one was more of an everyday. It was so glamour. I know this was more of an everyday, but I was so proud of my work. But I oh, try to read. Beautiful. You you would say that she supports everything <laughs> I do. Do, but okay. You guys got to meet a little bit of where I can come from. This is my sister, my big sister. Yeah. And yeah, so we're gonna go out, gonna eat. Where where are we going now? Oh, we're going to the, yeah. okay. <laughs> Which is so know. fun because that's like no, I think it's funny because like you know that's just like that reminds me of a kid. That's oh, weird. we did. You still there after church? <laughs> I haven't Sundays. been there in so long. Yeah, but that was weekly. Yeah, so. we used to do that like all the time. That's yeah. weird. But um, anyways, I I'm talking too much. Who knows what all is gonna make? And look at her pony. Her pony's like Thank 22 you. inches. Oh Next. lord, okay, let me stop. I can't, I can't too much. Who are we waiting on? I'm waiting on my baby girls. What? I, I was the first one ready. <laughs> I know. I can't. I know, I'm waiting I said on Puppy and Pierre. Yeah, Puppy, are you ready? You're not even ready. I am ready. Mm. You're, ready. Mm. you're not ready if you're still buttoning your, if you're still buttoning your shirt, you're not ready, Puppy. 
Yeah. I have to buy CT Nicole. That's so, so funny because I'm in my room as a child. I'm like trying to find a quiet spot where I can, but I still have like Aliyah and Left Eye and everything up here. Anyway, how do I even elaborate? Everything flows effortlessly and the way she writes, you know, the time spans don't even feel like time spans. It just feels like regular life you're following how day in and day on goes out like one week you may feel this way the next week you're at this point and yeah anyways it's time to eat i think they're actually finally ready so i'm gonna go and join my family bye I just finished with the fire on high and it was really good. Um, I'm trying to collect my thoughts to really think about it. Um, yeah, it's just so good. So all in all, I will say like it's hard to compare this to The Poet X because it's completely different stories, but I feel like Elizabeth Acevedo's writing style, what I love about it is it no matter what it is, it just feels so authentic. It doesn't feel forced, it flows naturally, and you feel like you're getting glimpses into someone's world without everything having to be explained or told from them controlling what your viewpoint of the characters is. For example, like Amani, like I feel like I take her as someone who's strong, who has a strong sense of self, but still deals with the regular instances where she kind of has to combat the shame that society tries to pass on to her and stuff. But nothing really is directly stated necessarily to say that, but you're just seeing her everyday life and showing like her resilience and her beauty and the support that she has within her family. And I feel like it just combats a lot of the stereotypes that are assigned, not because it's trying to combat the stereotypes, but just because it's being authentically real. So it's giving you a true glimpse of what kind of life is like. Those are like my initial thoughts, but I actually have to get ready to go out. So let me go ahead and get dressed, but it's so beautiful right now because it's like raining and thundering and it's like the perfect reading, I guess, setting. Um, while it's like raining and stuff. It is time to leave Orlando. Um, and I haven't really gathered all of my thoughts regarding with the fire on high. Like for you to follow up the Poet X and for it to be such an amazing book. And even myself, I'm like, would she be able to outdo it even though you shouldn't compare the two? It was a completely kind of different story, but you can tell her style is one where she allows you to be exposed to a certain life like where you get warped in the story when the author focuses on telling that character's truth versus worrying about the audience. Anyways, I'm blabbering and I'm sure I will have a better synopsis in my recap or in my book review. I feel like this warrants a solo sit down, really talk it through book review. Anyways, love and light. Love you guys. Bye.